when you invest in a stock, you're hoping the company grows and performs well over time. That's how you end up making money. And as an active trader myself, who buys and sells stocks on an ongoing basis, I rely heavily on market data, news, and companies' financials to help me make stock trading decisions. Yahoo Finance, being one of the largest financial data platforms in the world, serves as this massive repository of market information where people access stock quotes, financial news, and detailed company data in real time. If you're unfamiliar with Yahoo Finance, it's an online financial information platform that provides stock quotes, up-to-date news, portfolio management resources, and international market data. With millions of daily active users, Yahoo Finance has become a key resource for investors to track market movements, research companies, and make informed financial decisions. For the average user, it's a place to monitor their investments, stay updated on market trends, and access comprehensive financial data without needing expensive professional subscriptions. And with the Yahoo Finance MCP server, we can have Cloud analyze stock price movements and financial news in real time to identify emerging market trends, predict sentiment around specific stocks or sectors, track sudden spikes in trading volume or price action, and many more use cases. In this video, we will build a Yahoo Finance MCP server using Python, compatible with Cloud Desktop, VS Code, and other client applications by utilizing Yahoo Finance's publicly accessible API endpoints. That means no API key is needed. Just simple get request calls to access a wealth of financial data that Claude can use to assist with your investment research and analysis. Now, let me share a quick demo using the Yahoo Finance MCP server in Claude Desktop so you can see how it performs before we dive into the development. So, with travel season approaching, I'm considering investing in airline stock. And I want to compare the financial outlooks of United Airlines, Delta Delta, and American Airlines to determine which airline has the best financial outlook. In the prompt, I can ask for the financials for United Airlines, Delta, and the American Airlines, and then compare the performance of the three companies. Based on the request, Claude understands that I am asking a trading specific question and it will select the appropriate Yahoo Finance functions from the Yahoo Finance MCP server to retrieve the information needed to fulfill the request. A very useful MCP tool set if you buy and sell stocks. And that's all the intro and demo I'm going to share. Now let's dive into developing the Yahoo Finance MCP server in Python. Before we begin, Make sure you have some experience working with Python and MCP servers. If you don't know how to set up an MCP server, you can watch my video on how to get started using the link in the description below. Now launch your terminal and run the command to install Yahoo Finance API Python library. To keep the tool modules organized and separated from the MCP server script, in your project directory, create a folder called Tools. Inside the Tools directory, create a Python file called Yahoo Finance Tools.py. In the Yahoo Finance Tools module, import the JSON and Y Finance modules. To keep the Yahoo Finance Tool functions organized, create a class called Yahoo Finance Tool. Inside the class, I created nine functions to be used for retrieving different types of financial data from Yahoo Finance API. You don't really need to know too much about how the code works, but well, we'll handle that actually. But you do need to know what each function does. For that, I will quickly go to each function and explain the usage and purpose. All right, the get current price method is probably one of the simplest functions in the class. It takes a stock symbol as input and returns the current stock price. The getCompanyInfo method provides comprehensive information about a company. 
It retrieves the full company profile from Yahoo Finance and extracts key details like the company name, symbol, current stock price, market cap, industry, and many other fields. Usually, I use this function to identify a company's stock ticker, sector, and market size. A very useful function in my opinion. The get historical stock prices method allows you to fetch historical price data. You can specify the period parameter, which can be set to values like one day, five days, one month, three months, all the way up to max for all available data. You can also set the interval between data points to values like one day for daily, one week for weekly, or one month for monthly data. The get stock fundamentals method focuses on extracting fundamental financial data for a stock. It provides important metrics like PE ratio, PB ratio, dividend yield, EPS, beta, and 52 week high and low prices. This is perfect for fundamental analysis of a company's financial health. And here's the rest of the function. The get income statements method is another really important function to help with stock analysis. The function fetches the income statements for a company. This provides crucial financial data about a company's revenue, expenses, and profits over time, all formatted as JSON for easy parsing in your application. The get key financial ratios method pulls financial ratios from Yahoo Finance. The function returns a comprehensive set of financial metrics and ratios that can be used for in-depth financial analysis of a company. The Get Analyst Recommendations method retrieves analyst ratings and recommendations for a stock. This is another key function to help me determine if I should buy, hold, or sell a stock. The get company news method fetches recent news stories about a company. You can specify how many news items you want using the num stories parameter. By default, the function returns the three most recent news articles related to the stock. And the last method, get technical indicators, provides technical analysis data for a stock over a specified period. This is useful for traders who rely on technical indicators to make trading decisions. Similar to the historical prices method, you can specify different time periods for the data. At this point, we are done with the Yahoo Finance tool module. The next step is to set out the Yahoo Finance MCP server. In your project directory, create a Python file called mcpyahoofinance.py. In the file, import the FastMCP in the Yahoo Finance tool classes, then set up the MCP server. I will name the server as Yahoo Finance Tools and specify the required Python package. From there, use the add tool method from the MCP object to add each Yahoo Finance function from the Yahoo Finance tool class. So at this point, we are officially done developing the Yahoo Finance MCP server. Launch your terminal and run the command mcp install followed by the file name mcpyahoofinance.py to add the mcp server to cloud desktop. If you type and set up everything correctly, you should see the message successfully install Yahoo Finance tools in cloud app. On my cloud desktop, I already removed the Yahoo Finance tools mcp server as you can see on my screen here. Now restart the cloud desktop. If I check the MCP servers list, I should see Yahoo Finance Tools MCP server is showing running on my cloud desktop. To test the MCP server in the prompt, I will ask, give me today's news and stock performance for NVIDIA and AMD. And based on the request, Claude identifies this is a test that has to do with stock analysis and research. It then selects the appropriate functions from the Yahoo Finance tool server to fetch the relevant information. And for the new search, I think it is because 
Cloud already has its own web search tool. It uses the built-in tool instead. For that, I should specify choose functions from Yahoo Finance MCP server first, but you get the point. And here's the output generated from Cloud, which in my opinion gives a pretty good overall performance summary without doing any research on my own. That concludes this Yahoo Finance MCP server development for Claude desktop walkthrough. I hope you find the video useful. If you're a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And if there are any tutorial ideas you have in mind and you'd like me to cover, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.